Hi students, welcome to Sunil's tutorial. I'm Sunil Mirwani and today we'll be doing this chapter called as Solutions and Colligator Property. Now in the previous lecture we had seen the concept of lowering of vapor pressure. Let's continue with that concept. Lowering of vapor pressure. Right? Now why do you have lowering of, first of all what is lowering of vapor pressure? We know that vapor pressure of a solution is less than vapor pressure of solution is less than vapor pressure of pure solvent of pure solvent why let's try to see this guys vapor pressure as we know depends upon the surface area we had discussed this in the previous lecture we had seen this diagram also in the previous lecture these are those molecules which are present inside the liquid. Now some of these molecules will acquire excess kinetic energy and will come up, will acquire sufficient energy to break the barrier and come up here. Right? Now, if the container is properly closed, this uh, condensation would take place, they would exert a pressure they would exert a pressure on the surface of the liquid. So there would be some pressure that would be exerted by uh, a pure solvent. I could represent this as T. Suppose if I have a solution. Now in solution what will happen is some part of the surface is going to be covered by the solute molecules. Some part of the surface is going to be covered by the solute molecules. Therefore, there will be less surface area available for the solvent molecules to escape into the air as a result of which there will be less number of molecules that will go up in the air therefore there will be less number of molecules that will exert a pressure on the surface of the liquid let's call this as PS right vapor pressure of the solution we can clearly understand from this diagram that the vapor pressure of the sol uh, pure solvent is going to be more than the vapor pressure of the solution right now, the surface area would go on decreasing as the concentration of the solution increases because as the concentration of the solution increases, uh, there would be more solute present therefore a larger part of the surface area would be covered by the solute. So I could write this down. I can say that lowering of vapor pressure, lowering of vapor pressure increases with increase in concentration of solution why because as the concentration of the solution increases larger part of the surface area would be covered by solute molecules therefore there would be less space for the solvent molecules to move up right those that have acquired excess kinetic energy right because with increase in concentration because with increase in concentration uh, the number of solute particles number of solute particles number of solute particles increase and thereby reduce reduce solvent molecules on the surface of the liquid molecules on the surface of liquid fine do we get this in here so it's primarily primarily because of the blockage of the solvent molecules from the surface of the solution that the vapor pressure changes so once we understand this we can understand all the consequent laws or the subsequent laws that we have there. Now, you have a law called as Raoult's law. Right? This was discovered in the year 1887 by the chemist F. M. Raoult. F. M. Raoult in the year 1887 discovered the relationship
relation between vapor pressure this is called the relationship between vapor pressure and composition of the solution and composition of solution so that's what he is done now we will see what is this law and what does it denote now in order to understand this law let's first write a few variables down let us assume that let p0 be the vapor pressure of the pure solvent b vapor pressure of pure solvent let's assume that p0 is the vapor pressure of the pure solvent let us assume that p is the vapor pressure of the solution i just explained to you the concept of lowering of vapor pressure i can therefore say that vapor pressure of the pure solvent is going to be greater than the vapor pressure of the solution we had a huge discussion on this therefore i could say that p0 minus p is the extent to which the vapor pressure has been lowered is nothing but the lowering of vapor pressure right now i am going to represent this p0 minus p as delta p so you will say let us assume that delta p is p0 minus p right so where now delta p is going to uh, indicate the lowering of vapor pressure now let's come to the law what does raoult's law state it states that the lowering of vapor pressure of a dilute solution is equal to the mole fraction of the solute i'll explain to you what is mole fraction he says that the relative ro lowering relative lo i'll just write the law first and then i'll explain it to you the relative lowering of vapor pressure the relative lowering of vapor pressure of dilute solution is equal to mole fraction of solute present in the solution right that is what is your raoult's law that means the extent to which the vapor pressure will go down will depend upon the mole fraction of the solute that is present we have already discussed this that as the concentration increases there will be more solute particles as the mole fraction changes the solute particles that will be present on the surface will change and obviously the vapor pressure will also change thus he came up with this principle that the lowering of vapor pressure the extent to which the vapor pressure will go down will depend upon how many solute particles are present on the surface Now I cannot actually measure the solute particles present on the surface, so he came up with this concept of mole fraction. Right? Now we'll actually mathematically try to prove this. Let us assume that n one is the mole fraction. Oh, solvent. Now remember, we have learned in the previous lecture what is mole fraction. Right? Now. so that means i can restate this law i can say that the vapor pressure or i could say that the partial pressure vapor pressure of a in a solution partial vapor pressure in a solution is equal to the product of vapor pressure of pure solvent vapor pressure of pure solvent and its mole fraction the same law restated in other words for mathematical derivation mole fraction right that means i can say that p 
is equal to P0 into N1. P is equal to P0 into N1. Now in any solution, I can say that N1 has to be less than 1. If it is a solution, obviously there will be some solute molecules. That means the solute, the whole fraction of the solvent is going to be less than 1. Therefore, I can say that if N1 is less than 1, that means I am multiplying P0 by a number which is less than 1, which indicates that P has to be less than P0. That's the reason why P0 has to be multiplied by a number less than 1, right? Therefore, I can say delta P is nothing but P0 minus P. We have already derived that. That's my lowering of vapor pressure, right? Now, if I substitute the value of P with this, I can say that delta P is P0 minus, instead of P, I can write P0 into L1. I'm substituting the value of P as P0 into L1, in which case I will get delta P is nothing but P0, 1 minus N1, right? Leave that there, but we know that N1 plus N2 should be equal to 1. Mole fraction of the solute plus mole fraction of the solvent should be equal to 1. Therefore, I can say that N2 is 1 minus N1. So, 1 minus N1 can be substituted as N2. Therefore, I will get delta P is P0 into N2. Right? Thus, I could say that N2 is delta P upon P0, right? Now, delta P upon P0 is nothing but the relative lowering of vapor pressure. But delta P upon P0 is the relative lowering of vapor pressure. Vapor pressure, I am henceforth going to write as Vp. Right? So thus we have proved that N2 is nothing but the mole fraction of the solute where N2 is mole fraction of solute. Thus we have said that the relative lowering of vapor pressure is equal to the mole fraction of the solute. Right? Now I can say that but what is mole fraction of the solute? Mole fraction of the solute, if N1 and N2 are the number of moles of solute and solvent, if N1 and N2 are number of moles of solute and solvent, it should be solvent and solute. Solvent and solute then I can say that what will be N2 mole fraction of the solute will be nothing but small N2 upon N1 plus N2 we have done this definition in the previous lecture now if the solution is dilute if it is a dilute solution then the number of moles of solvent will be far greater than the number of moles of solute. If the solution is dilute, obviously there will be only few uh, number of moles of solute present in them. Right? Therefore, I can say that N1 plus N2 will approximately then be equal to N1. Right? So, I can substitute this value of N1 plus N2 here. In which case, I will get mole fraction of the solute is going to be number of moles of solute upon number of moles of solvent. I am substituting that N1 plus N2 as N1. Why? Because this is a dilute solution. Right? Now, let's assume that let W2 grams of solute Solute, like W2 grams of solute of molecular weight, weight 
M2 we dissolve in W1 grams of solvent of molecular weight M1 right now in that case therefore I can say that N2 by definition number of moles is nothing but weight upon molecular weight is nothing but W2 upon M2 and N1 will be equal to W1 upon M1 right so if I substitute I will get therefore N2 is nothing but N2 upon N1 which can be written as W2 upon M2 divided by W1 upon M1 which is nothing but W2 upon W1 denominator of denominator becomes numerator M1 upon M2 right once I have this then I can say that I did but we have said that the relative lowering of vapor pressure is equal to the mole fraction of the solute substitute the value of N2 we found out so delta P upon P is W2 M1 upon W1 M2 right in which case I can find out molecular weight of the solvent no of the solute by using the formula W2 M1 into P upon W1 upon delta P0 so that's how you can also find out the molecular weight of the solvent by using Brown's law. Right? Do we get this in here? This equation can be used to calculate the molecular weight um, of a solute provided the vapor pressure of the solvent is known. Fine, do we get this in here? Now let's see a few numericals on this. Please take down. Uh, the vapor pressure the vapor pressure of a solution the vapor pressure of a solution at a given temperature containing 72 grams of solute containing 72 grams of solute in 1000 grams of water is 600.5 newtons per meter square is 600.5 newtons per meter square while that of pure water while that of pure water is 614.8 newtons per meter square calculate the molecular weight of the solute calculate the molecular weight of the solute Calculate the molecular weight of the solute. The solvent here is water. So what will be the molecular weight of water? Molecular weight of water H2O is 1 into 2 plus 16 that is 18 grams that will be the molecular weight of the solvent here we have just derived the formula now before I can use the formula let's find out delta P first delta P we know is nothing but P0 minus P so that will be 614.8 minus 600.5 this is going to be 14.3 newtons per meter square that's going to be my delta P now I can say that M2 is nothing but P0 W2 M1 we just derive this equation upon 
delta P W1. I presume all the values are known to me. P0 is known to me. W2 M1 delta P we just found out W1. All the values are known to me. I should be able to get the answer for this. The answer for this should be pure simple multiplication 56. That should be the answer for this. Next, take on next one, please. The vapor pressure of water. The vapor pressure of water at a certain temperature. The vapor pressure of water at certain temperature is 2.425 into 10 raised to 3 newtons per meter square. Calculate the partial pressure, partial vapor pressure, calculate the partial vapor pressure over a solution over a solution containing hundred and two point six grams of sucrose containing hundred and two point six grams of sucrose in thousand grams of water at the same temperature in thousand grams of water at the same temperature if the molecular weight of sucrose is 342 if the molecular weight of sucrose is 342 right solvent is water therefore molecular weight of water will be nothing but 1 into 2 plus 16 that is 18 right once I have this they have asked me to find out uh, calculate the partial pressure of you have to calculate the partial pressure okay first of all I can say that molecular weight of the solute is nothing but we have derived the equation uh, molecular weight of the solute is going to be W2M1 P upon W1 delta P0 right now in this case I can say that delta P0 delta P0 is going to be nothing but P into W2 into M1 upon W1 M2 right this is my P that's given to me uh, I could therefore say that delta P from here I'll come to know my value of delta P0 if I know my value of delta P0 and I know my value of P I should be able to get the value of uh, some value is not given. Did I read the sum correctly? Molecular weight of sucrose is given to me. I know W1, I know W2, I know M1, I know M2. Delta P0. Right? In that case this is going to be P0. The formula is P0. So in that you have all the values. So you will come to know your delta P0 once you have your delta P0. I can say but delta P0 is nothing but P0 minus P. From here I will come to know delta P0. P0 is known to me. I can get the value of P from here. The answer for this sum should be 2.411 into 10 raised to 3 newtons per meter square. Right? Right, we'll stop this here for the day. Thank you very much.